Hi everyone, so this video will quickly review supply. I will review the law of supply and the non-price determinants of supply. So let's get started. All right, so the law of supply states that ceteris paribus, other things held constant, as price rises, quantity supplied increases, and ceteris paribus, as price falls, quantity supplied decreases. So there's a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. Remember, we say quantity supplied has changed, supplied has changed whenever there's a change in price. It is incorrect to say that a rise in price will cause an increase in supply. That is incorrect. It's more accurate to say a rise in price will cause a, an increase in quantity supplied. So the law of supply is visually represented by movements along the supply curve. A change in price will cause an upward or a downward movement along the same supply curve. So for example, moving from P2 to P1, which is a fall in price, leads to a fall in quantity supplied, not a fall in supply. Remember, it's a movement along. So we say fall in quantity supplied from Q2 to Q1. And the opposite is true. If price rises from P1 to P2, from P1 to P2, this leads to an increase in quantity from Q1 to Q2. We say there's been an increase in quantity supplied. So the law of supply explains movements along the same supply curve. So what is the difference between an individual producer's supply and market supply? The individual producer's supply is the quantity of a good or service an individual producer is willing and able to produce and sell at a certain price over a certain period of time. Market supply, on the other hand, is a different concept. It's the quantity of a good or service that all producers in a given market are willing and able to produce and sell at a certain price over a certain period of time. How do we derive market supply? It's basically derived by horizontal summation of all individual producer supply curves. You add up the total quantity supplied at each price, and this is how you derive market supply. So basically, individual supply is the supply of the firm or the organization or the individual producer. Market supply is the supply of the industry, all the producers in this industry. This leads us to the non-price determinants of supply, which are the factors that will cause a shift of the supply curve to the right or to the left. Remember, a rightward shift represents an increase in supply. This is when you can say increase in supply. It's incorrect to say uh, a shift to the right is an increase in quantity supplied. No, a shift to the right is an increase in supply. A shift of the supply curve to the left, a leftward shift, represents a decrease in supply. So what are those non-price determinants? The first one is changes in the costs of the FOPs, the factors of production. If the costs of production rise, it's now more expensive to produce this product. Supply will decrease and vice versa. The second non-price determinant is the price of related goods. When it comes to supply, goods can either be in joint supply or competitive supply. This is when they're related or they could be unrelated. So what's the relationship of being in joint supply? Basically, products that are in joint supply are often produced and supplied together. So if the price of product B rises, this will actually lead to supply of product A increasing as they are in joint supply. They're often producing together. If the price of B rises, producers will want to produce more B to basically make more profit. So naturally, as a byproduct, product A, the supply of product A will also increase. Goods that are in competitive supply are goods that are uh, where the producer can produce one or the other. So say, for example, the producer can produce strawberry yogurt or mango flavored yogurt. If the price of product B, say strawberry yogurt, rises, then the supply of product A, mango flavored yogurt, will decrease as they are in competitive supply. The producer can produce one or the other. So if one if one product has a higher price, that producer has incentive to increase supply of that product, which means they'll take scarce resources from the supply of the other product. So these are goods that are in competitive supply. The next non-price determinant is future price expectations. If producers expect prices to rise, they'll supply less now and supply will decrease. If producers expect prices to fall, they'll supply more now while price is still high before it falls and supply will 
increase. Indirect taxes and subsidies. Indirect taxes will actually increase the producer's cost to production because the government actually collects the tax from the producer. So it will raise the producer's cost to production. And so this causes supply to decrease. Now, remember, um, at the end of the day, the producer will pass part or maybe all of the tax to the consumers. But what matters here is that the government collects the tax, the indirect tax, from the producer. So this raises the producer's cost to production and causes a decrease in supply. Subsidies, on the other hand, will decrease the producer's cost of production and so cause supply to increase. I apologize, this is the wrong arrow. This is supposed to be an increase. So subsidies will actually cause supply to increase. Why? Because they decrease the producer's costs of production. The next non-price determinant is the number of firms. If the number of firms in the market increases, there are more firms competing in this market, supply will increase and vice versa. This brings us to the next non-price determinant. The next non-price determinant is changes in technology. An improvement in technology will increase supply because an improvement in technology will um, cause the firms to become more efficient and will lower the cost of production which will increase supply. A deterioration in technology, on the other hand, will raise the producer's cost of production and will cause supply to decrease. This um, sums up all the non-price determinants of supply, which cause the supply curve to shift to either the right or the left. As you can see here, a shift of the supply curve to the right is used to represent an increase in supply from S to S1, a shift to the right, supply has increased. A shift to the left, on the other hand, from S to S2, is used to represent a decrease in supply. You are also required to distinguish or understand the difference between a movement along the supply curve and a shift of the supply curve. So I'm going to explain this difference using three points. First of all, a movement along the supply curve is caused by a change in price while a shift of the supply curve is caused by a change in a non-price determinant. Okay, So a movement along is explained by the law of supply, while a shift of the supply curve is explained by the concept of the non-price determinant of supply. The next point of difference. A movement along the supply curve is represented by an upward represented by an upward or downward movement from one point on the supply curve to another point on the same supply curve. Okay, So an increase in price from P1 to P2 will increase the quantity supplied from Q1 to Q2. This is a movement along the same supply curve, and the opposite is true. While a shift of the supply curve is represented as a shift of the whole supply curve to either the right or to the left. A shift to the right is an increase in supply. A shift to the left is a decrease in supply. Um, a movement along the supply curve is described as a change, increase or decrease, in quantity supplied. Whenever there's a movement along, we use the word quantity supplied. A shift of the supply curve, on the other hand, is described as a change, an increase or decrease in supply. You can actually use the word supply when there is a shift. So I hope this sums up um, uh, and helps you explain in your own words the difference between a movement along the supply curve and a shift of the supply curve. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this review.